The demand for income generating ETFs through option strategies such as covered calls are really booming. As a result of that demand, there are now over 190 covered call style ETFs. They exist for individual stocks, bonds, ETFs, and commodities. However, they are not all created equal. The different strategies that they employ can have significant long-term impacts on your portfolio. Thanks for joining me, fellow financial independence seekers. Matt here with Trading Your Job. I've reviewed a number of covered call type ETFs. They do offer unique strategies uh, compared to other income producing ETFs. And that uniqueness comes from generating premiums from option strategies rather than from income from the companies or the bonds or the commodities that they invest in. So they are creating income through derivatives. When looking at covered call ETFs, we never want to solely focus on the yields without considering what will likely happen long term to our principal as well. The strategies may seem sound on the surface, but the execution is lacking or the reasoning might be flawed. Today we'll be looking at one of the popular covered call ETFs that employs a collar strategy and seeks to provide income with less volatility. Over the lifetime of this fund, it is not really offered the type downside protection as advertised. And why is that? Well, that's the question we'll be looking at today in today's ETF review of NUSI, NUSI. We will help to answer if it's one you should consider adding if you don't own it or consider getting rid of if you do. NUSI is the ticker symbol for the nationwide NASDAQ 100 Risk Managed Income ETF. It's been around since December of 2019 it's got an expense ratio of 0.68%. Two of the fund managers of NUSI also manage another new covered call ETF, SPYI, and I did a review of that one a few weeks ago. Many of you brought this to my attention in the comments of that video. And I think the underperformance of NUSI and the strategy employed on NUSI is one of the reasons subscribers brought to my attention their concerns about SPYI and why it could also underperform since it follows a similar rules-based strategy and is managed by two of the same people. But I digress. The fun goals are targeting high monthly income using a rule-based option strategy on the NASDAQ 100, constant fully financed downside hedge with out-of-the-money puts, and flexibility with the market. They make close covered calls prior to expiration to capture the upside if the rules-based indicators dictate doing so. The fund employs an options collar. Here is that same collar illustration I put up previously, but I've added red dots for how it appears that new C, the strategy, is actually implemented and different. A collar is when you sell covered calls for income and also buy protective puts for downside protection. Ideally, the premiums that you receive for selling the covered calls would pay for the puts, but that means you'll be buying puts that are out of the money by a pretty significant amount. The downside protection does not kick in until you reach the strike price of the put and they are in the money. And I could not find specifically in the literature what percentage they target for their out of the money puts, but based on the declines that QQQ had in 2022, that did not benefit from the puts for this fund. I'm going to say around 10% out of the money at least. Uh, this means that the Qs would have to decline 10% in a month before the puts would provide any protection. So a slow descent sideways would not really be protected. Really, only a significant plunge would be what we be protected from in this fund and that's not what we tend to see because buyers usually step in and buy the dip as they've been conditioned to do for 15 years. So in this chart the blue dot represents 5% of full market participation to the upside and downside but the way that Nusi does it to maximize income is by selling as close at the money calls as possible which limits upside and then they give you 10% downside market participation before the protective put kicks in and that's not a recipe for long-term success. I looked at their current holdings as of today, 716, and they have some calls that are in the money. So if NDX finishes the week above 15,375, they'll have to deliver shares at that strike price. Their protective put that they have is for the 14,475 strike price on NDX, which would mean it would have to decline over 6% this week before the puts offered any downside protection. I don't know when they purchased these contracts, but based on the performance of the fund, it seems like they are limiting upside too much and not buying downside protection at opportunistic times, but at the time set forth by their rules-based model and with constant protection, which is costly. So what types of returns has this collar strategy produced? Well, based on the growth of $10,000 chart picture here, which does assume reinvestment of dividends and any capital gains, it's not doing so great. And this is a during a period where the Qs had big rallies as well as significant downside in 2022. So we would expect Nusi to underperform during rallies because the upside participation is capped. Now, premiums do increase Increase when there's uh, rallies because implied volatility increases so you do get more for premium but you're not participating in the upside above the strike price of whatever option you sell and this chart shows that the protective puts they are buying must be too far out of the money to be helpful and so they're just having this cost of buying puts and it's not 
really protecting them. It's just a cost and it's reducing their performance. It's a drag. So they're limiting their upside performance with their calls that are up the money. And then those seem to be furthering the problem that they have going here. They've just made their uh, range range of market participation too small and too much to the downside. Over long time periods, this fund should not be able to grow much, if at all, compared to other covered call strategies available. So there's still downside risk as well, as evidenced by 2022, the decline wasn't really protected. It, it does appear you would be protected against a flash crash, but is that really the best way to do it? Wrapping up things here with the portfolio visualizer, there just does not seem to be a benefit in my mind. I'm comparing NUSI to the Qs and also to QILD which is another extremely popular covered call ETF on the NASDAQ. QILD sells at the money covered calls and it does not have downside protection. Since inception with dividends reinvested, the CAGR for NUSI, that's compound, compound annual growth rate, is 3.55. QYield is actually slightly better at 3.80. But when you compare that to the Qs and their CAGR of the same time period of 17.79, you gotta wonder if the strategy is leaving too much on the table. NUSI has also had more downside risk than QILD, and QILD doesn't even buy any protective puts. So in the worst year, when the Qs were down 32.5% of this time that we're looking at, NUSI was down 28%, QILD was down 19 So the main reason is that the cost of buying those puts for NUSI, especially when the puts don't ever reach in the money status, further reduces the returns. And the covered call income can already offset some downside risk as we saw in 2022. Nusi's strategy is just not being well executed and needs to be adjusted to have any future chance of success. Maybe they have already adjusted it since 2022, but that isn't advertised anywhere. Personally, Nusi is one that I would avoid as it's currently being operated because there are better alternatives out there. Even with dividends reinvested, it's barely achieved a positive compound annual growth rate. And we want to make sure we give ourselves a chance of preserving our capital even if the goal is current income. Because there are funds that offer that chance of upside. And since markets go up 88% of the time, on average historically, we want to be participating in the long side as well and not capping it with at the money calls when other funds offer out of the money calls with better total return and current income. I think that about wraps us up for today. I'll be releasing more content weekly. Please let me know if you have any requests. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.